These last couple years have not been kind to home buyers. The rates have been high, the supply has been low, and the competition has been fierce. Many prospective buyers have found themselves priced out of the market while others have hesitated, hoping for a better opportunity that never seemed to come. As we look ahead to 2025, the question on everybody's mind is, will it change? Let's go. Now, typically, in order to be considered a healthy market, there needs to be a five to six month supply of homes. Now, according to the National Associations of Realtors, or NAR, as of June 2024, the current supply is 4.1. Now, the number has been increasing, but not enough to alleviate the issues in the market. In addition, as of recording this video, interest rates are in the low sixes, and depending on your lender, or if you've paid points, they may even be in the high fives. Now, consumers should expect the rates to stay between these two ranges, mid fives to the high sixes, and any expectations of you know, rates in the twos and threes, unfortunately, that's probably not going to happen. Now, if the downward trend with interest rates continues, then there's a fair chance that more people will start putting their homes on market. But that's if, because you have to remember that during COVID, over 14 million people refinanced their mortgages in the, the twos and the threes and the four percents. Rates right now are in the, the sixes and high fives. It makes no sense for them to sell their home and buy another one for a higher interest rate. You can't blame them. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Now, I spoke to someone a couple weeks ago that had an interest rate of about 1.8. 1.8 is like free money. And the only reason why they are considering selling their home is to be closer to their family. Incidentally, I had another person, I think last week, who was considering selling his home. And the only reason why he was considered selling is because his financial advisor said, if you sell your home now, you can retire. And he did. So in most cases, if there's not gonna be a large economic drop and there's no incentive for them, these people are not gonna sell their homes and they're really only gonna sell them for personal reasons. Now, don't get me wrong. The rate steadily going down will help the market. If we look back to 2023, we saw about 4,090,000 homes sold. And in 2024, the NAR is expecting about 4.62 million homes to be sold, and around 5.35 million are expected to be sold in 2025. So the housing market is recovering, but this recovery will take time, and we are getting there just slowly. However, the other elephant in the room is home prices, because you know these people can start putting their homes back on market, but doesn't necessarily mean that the average American can afford them. So we're dealing with a large affordable housing crisis because you can have people working good jobs, you know, two incomes, good money, and they still can't afford these homes. And even if they can afford them, they get outbid by the 20 other people that are desperate, if not even more desperate than them to get a home because the supply is not there. Now this goes beyond simple supply and demand. Back in June, the country's median existing home sale price reached its highest ever at $426,900. But back in March of 2020, it was $280,700. Now that is an increase of 65% in little over four years. Now you're lucky if you get a 3% raise at work every single year, and that's really not keeping up with inflation, but how do you expect the average American to buy a home if they keep moving the goalpost aggressively down the field? Now, some may argue we need to build more homes, but if you happen to look at the builder's index, you'll understand why this might not necessarily be true. Because, just for some context, the builder's index rates how optimistic builders are about the future. Anything 50 and above means a majority of the builders are optimistic. And as of August of 2024, the builder's index rating is a 39. Another thing to consider is the cost of goods and services. So as they continue to go up, you have to see it from the builder's perspective. So let's say the builder has an option to build a $350,000 home or a $750,000 home. Let's say with the $350,000 home, it's just enough to break even for the cost of goods and services and all of that stuff. But with the $750,000 home, it's guaranteed that it will cover everything and then some for their profit. Because remember, these people do it for a living, so there needs to be a profit involved. So even though they're building more homes, doesn't necessarily mean that the American, the average American can afford it. So yeah, as it stands now, the market is slowly getting better, but probably not at the rate that people really want it to get better. So unfortunately, if you are a consumer in this market who is considering buying a home, then that may involve having some difficult conversations up ahead. 
So if you have any thoughts or any experiences, put them in the comments down below. I'd love to hear them. And until then, I'm Evan, and thanks for watching. If you liked what you just saw, then click on the video here. Also, if you haven't, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.